Hey everybody, and I'm here doing the first of the 31 and 31 reviews. It is Kaiju month for me. I'm going to go through a lot of the Godzilla films, but I'm also going to go through a couple of the monster films. Uh, there's a couple Godzilla films that I just kind of don't feel like watching again, so I'm going to replace some of them with things like Rodan and... Um, you know, maybe there might be some like Ultraman or some other kaiju, maybe a Gamera movie. We'll have to see, but uh, I'm going to try to do the gamut of Godzilla films. And of course, we have to start with the original. That's right, with the first movie we're doing is Gojira. Now, I'm not doing Godzilla, I'm not doing the Ray Bradbury version, uh, because, you know, a lot of the themes are kind of lost. They take a lot of the political stuff out of uh, the Ray Bradbury version, and while that was truly my first experience, well, actually some of the other ones were my real first experience, but it was a lot of Americans' first experience with the original Godzilla, and that's actually, the funny thing was is that it was sold for 25000 and made over $2 million in the U.S. box office alone by using Ray Bradbury as like a stand-in and dubbing a lot of the other lines in. Uh, the other fun fact that you might not know is that the Toho adopted the moniker, uh, the King of Monsters, because the Americans used that when they released their version of Godzilla. So, we're talking about Gogeta here. And, yeah, time in some of it maybe doesn't necessarily like lend itself to the film. But it's still a really interesting piece. And it's really interesting in its place in Japanese culture. And the fear of, you know, atomic radiation. So... That's what, if you didn't know, what Godzilla kind of represents for everybody out there. So, uh, overall, I mean, it's 1954, so the acting's kind of cheesy at points. Uh, especially with early Japanese acting, uh, it definitely gets better and better and better as things go along. Uh, and I'm going to try also watch these in the original language, which is rough. Uh, but I might go into the crappy English ones, the dubs as well, even though they're kind of fun to still go back and listen to. But... Uh, you know, in general, like I said, does hold up. Godzilla suit kind of is. And this is very much a, you know, it's not really that, like, a cheesy Godzilla film. You know, the ones that everybody truly knows where he fights a random monster. No, this is, you know, a very serious tone. Uh, and it's a parable. And it still holds up today. And I think for, you know, I can't say because I'm not a part of Japanese culture, but... Uh, you know, I would say that it's still pretty relevant today in some of the fears that the locals in Japan have about nuclear bombs. And I guess that happens when your country gets nuked by somebody else. So, uh, is it worth a watch? Yes, it's still worth a watch. And I think you guys should all go out there and try to see it if you can in the original version. If not, you're going to have to watch the, uh, you know, American remake with Ray Bradbury. Uh, and that one's still enjoyable too. It definitely cuts the time down. That goes down to 80 minutes instead of this being 96, I believe. So they cut a good chunk out of the film itself. So if you've got the chance, go out, watch the original Gojira. And my rating for this film, it's a 4 out of 5 Godzilla Roars. So until tomorrow or the next time, uh, we'll see you later. Uh, and this has been the 31 and 31, 31 Nights of Horror, 31 Days of Halloween, this is Kaiju Madness uh, from the Terrible Terror Podcast. We'll see you next time 